Hi everybody, I'm Zizel. In this video, I will talk about the reliability coefficient. As we know, reliability refers to the degree of the consistency of a measure. It is said that a test will be reliable when it gives the same or repeated results under the same conditions. So what is reliability coefficient? Reliability coefficient refers to a measure of the accuracy of a test or measuring instrument obtained by measuring the same individual twice and computing the correlation of the two sets of measure. Take note of that the ideal reliability coefficient is one. A test with a reliability coefficient of one is one which would give precisely the same results for a particular set of candidates, regardless of when it happened to be administered. For instance, a test which had a reliability coefficient of zero would give sets of results quite unconnected with each other. So in that sense, the scores that someone actually got, for example, on Wednesday, would be no help at all in attempting to predict the score he or she would get if they took the test the day after. So take note that it is between the two extremes of one and zero that the true or genuine test reliability coefficient are to be found. Now let's proceed to the types of reliability. So we have four types of reliability. We have the test and retest internal consistency, parallel forms, and inter-rater. Now let's talk about the test and retest method. The test and retest method is considered as the most straightforward and most appropriate method. So it involves administering the same test twice to the same group after a certain time interval has elapsed. So a reliability coefficient is then calculated to indicate the relationship between the two sets of scores obtained. And if a test is reliable, the scores that each student receives on the first administration should be similar to the scores on the second. Or in other words, it is given the same test twice to the same people at different times to see if the scores are still the same. And if a test is reliable, each person's scores will be completely predictable from his or her previous or first score. So for instance, we have your example of the test and retest. So you devise a questionnaire to measure the IQ of a group of participants and you administer the test two months apart to the same group of people. But the results are significantly different. So in that case, the test retest reliability of the IQ questionnaire is low. Okay, because take note that the longer the time interval, the lower the reliability coefficient is likely to be. Now let's proceed to internal consistency. Reliability can be estimated by measuring the internal consistency of the test. And the internal consistency method refers to the consistency of scores using only a single administration of an instrument. An internal consistency is a way to gauge how well 
a test is actually measuring what you want it to measure. And internal consistency is considered as an index of the reliability of a test. So one way to measure the internal consistency is to use the split half method. Split half method, it involves scoring two halves of a test separately for each person. So for example, the split half is determined by dividing the total sets of items. So for example, one half may be um, composed of um, even numbered questions and the other half, other half is composed of odd number questions. And then calculating the correlation coefficient for the two sets of scores. So we have examples of the internal consistency. So a group of respondents are presented with sets of statements designed to measure, for example, optimistic and pessimistic mindset, okay? to positive and negative mindset. So they must rate their agreement with each statement on a scale from one to five. So five is the highest and one is the lowest. So if the test is internally consistent, an optimistic respondent should generally give high ratings to optimism indicators and low ratings to pessimism indicators. So that correlation is calculated between all the responses to the optimistic statements, but the correlation is very weak. So in that case, it suggests that the test has low internal consistency. Next is parallel forms. Parallel forms, reliability measures the correlation between two equivalent versions of a test. So when you have two different assessment tools, for example, or, or sets of questions designed to measure the same thing. So for instance, a set of question is formulated to measure financial risk aversion in a group of respondents. So the questions are randomly divided into two sets. So the respondents are also randomly divided into two groups. So both groups take both the tests. So we have group A takes the test A first and the group B takes the test B. So the result of these two sets two or two tests are compared and then the results are almost identical or similar. So it indicates the high parallel forms of reliability. And the fourth one is inter-rater reliability. So it is also called inter-observer reliability. It measures the degree of agreement between different people observing or assessing the same thing. So we use it when data is collected by researchers. So like assigning ratings, scores, or categories to one or more variables. So for example, a team of researchers observe the progress of wound healing in patients. So to record the stages of healing of the patients, they're going to use the rating scales and with a set of criteria to assess various aspects of wounds, the results of different researchers assessing the same set of patients are compared. So the results are compared and if the researchers or if all the researchers give similar ratings, then in that case, the test has high inter-rater reliability. So that's it for 
the four types of reliability for the summary. Okay, take note of that for the test and retest, it indicates the same test over time. So from the word retest, so the same test over time and iterator, the same test conducted by different people. And in internal consistency, the individual items of a test and in parallel forms, the different versions of a test which are designed to be equivalent. So that's it for my report. Thank you so much for listening.